everybody. Um, hopefully a train won't be coming through here in the next few minutes, but I'll try to get a, a little bit of a video done before that happens. But I want to talk about the uh, speech that Trump gave tonight in Seoul. Actually, he gave it to, it's tonight, it's, it's nighttime here in Southern California. He gave it in the morning, which would be, today is what, Tuesday, he gave it Wednesday morning in Seoul, South Korea. I think that's right, I'm not sure. So anyway, I thought the speech was pretty good. In fact, I think it was one of the best speeches Trump gave, which tells me he didn't write it. There's no way Trump wrote that speech. Somebody wrote it for him. But he delivered it pretty well, which when he delivers a speech like that, he doesn't sound so crazy. He sounds a little bit more reasoned and thought out and more diplomatic, which is what that speech was tonight. It was, it was a speech where he compared the two Koreas. Uh, South Korea, the prosperous Korea, and North Korea, the not prosperous or the Korea that is... Um, it's prison Korea, so it's South Korea, very prosperous, and prison Korea, North Korea. And he laid out that fairly well, talked about the history, and talked about how um, North Korea obviously is, is, is not on the right track, South Korea is, and that um, um, if North Korea continues to go down the track that they're going, that they will not prosper. Um, so that was good. I mean, that was that all made a lot of sense. I think the problem with the speech was, is that Trump has said so many incredibly volatile things, like there's going to be fire and fury, like the world's never known. Um, there's going to be uh, um, little rocket man. He said so many things that it were so inflammatory that he kind of backed himself into a corner. Where tonight he sound more diplomatic, which is what I thought he should have done from the very beginning. So now it looks like he's the one that's backing down a little bit. I mean, um, the North Korean did not, uh, he continued to fire off missiles. In fact, he fired off missiles after uh, Trump said that if he did, he was, there was gonna be fire and fury like the world has never known. And now Trump is kind of acting like, hey, we're throwing out the olive branch. And uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you decide to go down this path, there's an open door for maybe um, some, uh, whatever maybe some trading some something something of uh, some prosperity offer to North Korea uh, for them to discontinue or destroy or completely dismantle their nuclear weapons uh, but like I say it looks like to me if you're a North Korean it's kind of a win for them because it looks like Trump's kind of backing off of his really rhetoric his fiery rhetoric and not so much uh, acting like he's gonna fire off some sort of weapon any day at North Korea because of uh, of their continuing with their uh, nuclear policy or nuclear weapons. So anyway, like I say, I thought it was a good speech. I thought it was well written, whoever wrote it. I don't know if Tillerson wrote it or somebody else wrote it. No, probably Tillerson would never write something like that. Uh, he probably had somebody else write it. But anyway, whoever did, the people that wrote the speech was pretty good. When I hear speeches like that, I don't always think Donald Trump's as crazy as I usually think he is because the speech actually made a little sense. However, I do think he's backed himself into a corner with North Korea. Uh, North Korea, I mean, the, the problems there go much deeper than just saying, hey, you know what, you're lost out on a lot of prosperity by being a uh, dictatorship. You know, it's a lot deeper than that. I mean, people know, or the citizens know, but the citizens have not been, uh, they're afraid. They're probably afraid. They're afraid to get information or information about what's going on. So until you can get information to the North Korean people, a lot of this stuff is just, it's just talk. Uh, the only way for this to ever change is for the people to change. And if the people continue to follow the dictator, they're not going to change. And if the dictator wants to continue to um, make weapons of mass destruction, uh, that's not going to change either. So probably the only way to change this whole thing in Korea is by infiltrating or doing something to get the information to the people so that they know. Because the people, once the people find out, um, they will no longer support the dictator. So I don't know what his plan is for that, but I do kind of laugh at how he's backed down significantly off of his destruction and how the world's gonna see something really big here if he doesn't stop and all of that. Now he's kind of opening the door for diplomacy, which is, like I said, what I thought that he should have done from the very beginning. That's what Tillerson's been trying to do. And that should have been the path to take. So Donald Trump, once again, shoots his mouth off 
and causes a problem and now he's got to back off from that which makes the United States look weak for the fact that he's backing down from all the fiery rhetoric. He'd been better off if he hadn't said the fiery rhetoric, rhetoric, rhetoric and just gone ahead and tried to propose some sort of negotiation process with him as Barack Obama did, as Bill Clinton did, as Bush 41 did, and as H.W. did. Herbert Wire, or uh, W. Bush did. They all just did exactly what Trump's going to do. Just try to offer some sort of deal, as Trump's been saying. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thank you.